is passed. Congress moved to avoid a potential government shutdown. This is a good outcome, one I'm happy we are getting done. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer pushed ahead with the vote Thursday to fund the government through December 3rd, a short-term bill that includes funding to resettle Afghan refugees and deliver disaster relief to states. Fifteen Republicans, including Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell, voted in support of the bill. We'll do our part to avoid a shutdown. The House then approved the government funding bill just in time to get it to the president's desk for approval. Nobody wants to be saddled with the government shutdown. With the shutdown avoided, attention now turns to avoiding a looming financial meltdown by raising the debt ceiling. GOP senators blocked an earlier effort, but Democrats like Representative David Price are preparing to go it alone. I wish we had uh, Republican cooperation on things like the debt limit. White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki assured Democrats will get it done. There's negotiations. They all have representatives uh, who are advocating for their points of view. That's democracy in action. In Washington, I'm Kelly Meyer, KCAU 9 News. And here in Siouxland, the city of Norfolk has approved their budget for the next year, and it shows some major growth in several areas, largely due to various capital projects and infrastructure investments. That's where construction will soon begin, including rehabilitation to the North Fork Elkhorn River and a portion of Benjamin Avenue getting a major renovation. City officials say now is the time to spend due to record low interest rates for large project bonds. And Nebraska lawmakers approved a new congressional district today. New maps could make it harder for Democratic presidential candidates to claim one of the state's electoral college votes. They have won in the Omaha area twice since 2008, but now more Republican voters have been added to District 2 via Saunders County, which was previously in District 1. Here in Siouxland, just a small southwest section of Thurston County remains in District 1 tonight. The rest has since been added to District 3. The Boyle Advisory for Missouri Valley, Iowa is being partially lifted. The advisory, however, remains in effect for residents and businesses on the west side of I-29 that are within the city limits. The rest of Missouri Valley residents are no longer encouraged to boil their water before using. And YouTube is banning anti-vaccine content as well as any videos it deems to have medical information in it from its site. They are targeting videos with unproven claims about autism, cancer and infertility and even HIV. Today, the tech company deleted accounts belonging to some of the most notable propagators of vaccine misinformation and conspiracy theory. But the question remains, does this violate free speech? Legally, the answer is no. Freedom of speech and the First Amendment uh specifically, only applies to state actors. It applies to the government, right? The Constitution was designed to protect us from the government, right? Not from Facebook, right? And not from Twitter. Just this summer, the White House revealed about 12 people were reducing, producing about 65% of anti-vaccine misinformation out on social media platforms. History comes to life this weekend at the Riversons Festival. The spectacle is back in Siouxland after being canceled last year. That festival is set to feature acrobatics and sword swallowers, as well as more than 50 vendors. More than 300 entertainers will be in costume. Rivercade event coordinator Phil Clay says that he's thrilled that the wait is almost over. Yeah, we're really excited to be back. I mean, it just having the year off, you know, kind of took it all out of us because we love this. Those of us that, that put this on and the cast of characters, the local inner group, uh, yeah, we're really, really excited about this. If you would like more information about event details and prices, you can visit our website right now at SiouxlandProud.com. And it is time now to check in on the weather. Chief Meteorologist Scott Larson standing by. And Scott, I know a lot of people looking forward to getting outdoors, whether it's for that festival or just enjoying their weekend weather. Uh, today, a little soggy in places. Yeah, it's been soggy out there for sure, Sophie. We've seen as much as four inches of rain happen in spots. Looking at the radar picture now, you can see that we have some pockets of heavy rain that continue at this time, especially just north of Sioux City, as you can see around Hinton, up toward Merrill and Lamars, and also to the southwest near Wisner and Norfolk. Pilger as well, picking up on some heavy precipitation. Zooming out here, looking at the radar estimated rainfall totals. Anywhere that you see those green and yellow areas on your screen in northeast Nebraska, that's where we've had between two and four inches of rain stack up. It looks like the rain chances will dissipate as we head into the weekend. We'll talk about when we dry things out and bring in some cooler weather. It's in the 9 on 9 forecast. Sophie. All right, thanks, Scott. 
It's every bit as much of an Okoboji tradition as the roller coaster, the Queen of the Bavarian Gardens, but it tastes a lot better, I would argue. Tim joins us now to explain for 55 years, a long time, the Taco House right. has been a must stop and attraction. That's right, and after talking with the current owner, there's no reason to think that that will change anytime soon. The reason why in this week's edition of Siouxland Stories. Uh, my name is Christina Hamrick, and I started working here in March of 2003. Now it's just like home. I don't know if I would do anything else or where I'd go if I wasn't here. The same can probably be said for the tens of thousands of taco loving supporters who frequent this Iowa Great Lakes treasure each year. Staying or to go? Can I get your name? It's been here long enough that great grandma brings the grandkids and the grandkids bring their kids and it just keeps keeps going. We're just always here and that count on go to place. That's been the case since Marta and Jack Campbell opened in 1966. After 38 years, Kim and John Bohr took over for 16 more, later handing the reins over to Christina and husband Todd just two years ago. Three owners in 55 years. It's like your parents, you don't want to let them down. You know, you, you feel that, you know, like pride when somebody says, oh, you're doing a good job, you know, it, nothing's changed. You know, it's definitely got a spot in your heart. But perhaps not as big as the place in your stomach. A beef burrito double shell. Every day, everything is made from scratch, not frozen. The menu board is filled with options. A beef dinner for here. Nothing's frozen, everything's cooked from scratch. And I just don't think you find that, you know, very many places anymore. But we have a huge menu. We have some that come in and like, this year I'm going to try everything on the list. I'm just going to go down the list and try everything. And so, I mean, I, and then I think they find their niche and what's their go-to. And then you have a lot of those that it's the same every day. <laughs> this family-run eatery has changed over the years, but not the food. We don't change anything when it comes to the food. Concrete's nice. Uh, <laughs> a little bit more seating's nice, but the food is just always the same and always will be. Speaking of the food. On a busy day, I can use 700 pounds of hamburger, which is almost a half a cow. <laughs> so <laughs> you can use 250 pounds of cheese. I mean, it's just mass quantities of that you're, you know, pumping out of here. And it's not frozen. It's not, you know, it's all made every day. So we're busy, busy. <laughs> The taco house gives new meaning to the phrase takeout order. When the kids go off to school, their mom says, I'm going to see, you know, Tommy at college. Can you make me 20 tacos to bring to him? And the farthest that I know of personally of a taco going somewhere is Paris. Um, a customer's son was stationed over there. Like 18 soft shells, five meat nachos. Some of them, like if they're bigger, they break it up and do like few 25 soft shells, 25 burritos, 25 quesadillas. 150 for one person I think is like about the biggest. We have them in Colorado, you know, Minnesota, Texas, I mean, you name it. That's it's somehow they get it <laughs> there. For those who choose to eat it where they got it, the Taco House offers a unique experience. This is probably one of the only kitchens that is 100% open that you can see every little thing that we do. I mean, you watch us make your food, you watch us cook, you watch, I mean, you watch the whole show. The little kids that are like five and six up there peeking in, looking and seeing what you're doing and waving. And, you know, they watch us in the window, you know, make their food when they're there. And when I'm 14, I'm gonna come work here. It's a tradition Christina hopes never ends. And once she says, she's committed to continuing. There's no option for failure. Um, there's no, I don't wanna let anybody down. I mean, it definitely, has high standards to live up to. For the record, <laughs> the meat nachos have been my go-to for about 40 years or so, I guess you could say. And if you're looking for that freezer order to get you through the winter, time is running out. The Taco House is set to close its 55th season on October 26th. So not a lot of time. I'll right. maybe head up there for Boji Scare or something and grab exactly. one. I have had those nachos. They are addictive. It's quite a place. It is. Thanks a lot for that, Tim. Well, millennials and their finances are back in the headlines tonight. It's time for their debt. Why it's higher than other generations in the past, coming up in about 10 minutes. And we have some more rain chances lasting into the weekend. Seasonal highs in the 60s and 70s. The 909 forecast coming up next. 
You're watching KCAU 9 News with Sophie Erber and Chief Meteorologist Scott Larson. This is KCAU 9 News at 5. All-time weather next week, highs in the low to mid 70s, 73 next Thursday, 74 on Friday, right at 75 for next Saturday. Make sure to send in your weather pictures to weather at KCAUtv.com. We'd love to share them with everybody on air. You can uh, send those again to the website or the uh, email that you see on your screen. We'll send you a form, send that form back, and we'll try to feature them. Yes, and we should have some interesting ones since our weather patterns are changing finally. Yeah, a lot of rain out there today, Sophie. That's certainly been a change. It's been a while since we've had any precipitation in Sioux City. All right, thanks a lot, Scott. Well, it can be hard to fund rare medical treatments, of course, and one father is going to the extreme to raise that kind of money. Follow his journey coming up in about seven minutes. But first, is debt a daily stressor in your life? If so, you have a lot in common with the average millennial. See what debt is burdening them the most next. Millennials are finding themselves deeper in debt than any other generation, and that debt is increasing year after year. Taylor Young spoke to a financial expert about why exactly it's happening. I don't like debt. Nearly a third of Americans stress about debt on a daily basis. I think of bondage and slavery and, and having someone over you to that, that, that like foot on your neck. And millennials, the largest living generation, racking up debt, are feeling the effects more than the rest. They seem to be spending more than probably they, they can afford. According to the Experian 2020 state credit report, the average 25 to 40 year old has an average of $27,000 of non-mortgage debt, more than any other age group above or below them. I've been able to stay out of debt most of my life except for my mortgage. Millennials facing student loans, car payment, and high credit card debt that's only increasing with interest. I think there's good debt and there's bad debt, but certainly, you know, going and spending money on vacations and um, going out to expensive venues or, you know, food, alcohol, those types of things. It's not, not good stuff to put on credit cards. I think people my age don't really take it as seriously as they should. Amanda Condit says she's lucky she grew up in a family that educated her about money, but has witnessed the effects of frivolous spending around her. Yeah, they kind of feel like it can just keep being pushed out and postponed, and I think that will come back to bite them in the end. Financial planners don't put all of the blame on the spenders. I hate to say this, but I totally blame the educational system. People are literally scared to talk about money. Well, one man is going on a barefoot journey and all to raise awareness and money to treat a rare condition that affects his daughter. Why he's taking his message overseas now next. Welcome back. A father has crossed the Atlantic Ocean to walk barefoot along the east coast of the United States. His mission is to raise money for his daughter's treatments. Corey Davis reports he still has 500 miles to go. The total distance is 1,200 miles and I'm doing the whole journey barefoot. That's right, no shoes, just his feet on the pavement from city to city the entire way with just over 20 days to go. I don't enjoy walking barefoot. I'm not an athlete. I'm not some kind of endurance junkie. I'm really just doing this because it's a way to get people to focus on this issue and hopefully help us raise the money we need. Currently serving in the British Army, Brannigan's main goal right now is to help kids like his nine-year-old daughter, Hasty. He says she was born with a rare genetic condition called Cornelia de Lange syndrome. But affects Hasty's growth She's not as tall as other kids. It affects her cognition, so learning and speaking is difficult for her. It causes seizures. Brannigan tells us that it's going to get worse in a couple of years without treatment. She's a little child with dreams. She wants to grow up to be happy and healthy. And the sad truth is, unless parents like me go out and do these crazy things, there is no money for rare disease treatments. So far, he says he's raised $1.2 million towards the $3.5 million goal, which he says is needed before clinical trials, research, and gene therapy can begin. It's really humbling to know that total strangers in a foreign country want to help my little girl. Take a live look outside right now. Cloudy skies over downtown Sioux City. But don't go away. Scott returns with one more check on your forecast. 
Before we wrap up at five, let's check in first with Tim for what's coming up at six. Hi, Tim. Some updated COVID numbers to share with folks this evening. The average 14 day positivity rate now in Woodbury County sits at 16%. It continues to climb according to the Siouxland District Health Dashboard. However, the rate in which folks are being vaccinated continues to slow. And across Iowa tonight, there are fewer ICU beds available than at any other time during the pandemic. We'll sort through those numbers coming up at six. Also, after World News this evening, Iowa's most recognized baseball field has a new owner. The Field of Dreams in Dyersville, Iowa, now the property of a group, including a two-time American League MVP. Sophie, we'll see if you can, well, I know you know who it is, but we'll see if folks can figure out who that is coming up between now and six. We'll see you then. I won't give it away. Yes, uh, there's no secret. I'm also a baseball fan, so. I do not know who it is, but. I'm but curious. not a great night to get outside and play some baseball. Uh, turf's got to be soggy, and there's more to come. Yeah, it's pretty wet out there tonight, Sophie. We are tracking some pockets of heavy rain that are happening. One immediately north of Sioux City toward Lamars, and another area of heavy precipitation immediately east of Norfolk in northeast Nebraska. It looks like the rain will carry into Friday and Saturday, though the chances will be reduced as it becomes more broken up across our map. Expecting to see highs in the 70s through the 9 on 9. All right, thanks so much, Scott. Thank you for joining us. We'll all see you again at six. Until then, have a great night, everyone.